ات ايش الدنيا ايش كيس شيء جيمس فوجت فينا شيء تفيق ميني لسنا تشيني بشر تشين بدأ لي بشر تشين بيش بيش اي بشر نلا بك تشكاي ارزونا دانا شا I am James Fogut. I was raised out here on the Navajo Reservation. I um, am water. I am water close together clan, born for Tachini, which is red running into water clan. That's my father's clan. And uh, I grew up on the reservation, uh, two hours north of the Native American Baha'i Institute. And let's see. Yeah, I was born and raised here. And I grew up around the Native American Baha'i Institute. So Johannes, my roommate, asked me to just be myself and say whatever, you know, answer his questions on camera for this, for his his documentary personality profile, whatever this is. Well, I'm a volunteer at the Native American Baha'i Institute, and I what I do is, in the, the capacity I serve is that I was an animator um, of junior youth. I was, right now, my main focus is raising up of uh, the junior youth animators and the training of the animators themselves. And so that's the capacity I serve. So I'm just going to start with the connection between the Baha'i faith and the Navajo culture. It's a very long, elaborate, beautiful story to tell. And I will just tell you what my, personally, what's happened to me. Um, from since I was a very, very young child, Yaj, that's um, Navajo for child, my grandmother and my whole family was, uh, since they can, I can remember, and our family history goes back, is that we've always been of service to the people who are in our area, our friends, not just our friends and family, but to everyone, being of service in my family in our Navajo culture was in our traditional ways how we lived it was that that's the highest station you can attain is being of service to people and in the Baha'i faith that is the highest station you can achieve in this world is the station of service to humanity and so that's already there's that uh, there's that parallel and from a long time ago my grandma always said you know when how she found the faith and what she taught me and how to investigate she says you'll know people by their actions you see, it was the deeds, you know, the people actually doing um, the Baha'is, people are part of this social and economic development process, this spiritualizing of society. That's what attracted them. And it was this sincerity in their words and their actions that my family saw. And I see it as well. And that's something I've been raised with. And just being of service was of such compliment. So maybe um, to explain a little bit about more about Navajo culture, Navajo philosophy. What's interesting is, in the Navajo language, there isn't a word for religion. There really isn't. And there isn't, uh, because there shouldn't have to be a word for religion. You know, if you ask a Navajo elder a question, you'd be lucky if you got stuck with a 10-minute answer. They're going to talk about how, like you say, what's the secret to being happy? You know, they're not going to say, oh, have a good diet, and that's their answer. No, they're going to talk about how you need to eat well, how your interactions with people plays out, how your relationship with God, how you pray, how you're at harmony with yourself and everyone else, and how the kind of effect you have in your environment and the, how the earth reflects and, and how you're friends with the trees and you respect everything. And there's the spirit, there's the physical, there's the knowledge, and there's everything, and it's just, it's holistic, it's a circle. Spiritual expression is living. Living the beauty way, being a Baha'i, is spiritual expression you do. It's a faith where you do, and it's accompanied by action. Conscious knowledge and belief in the practice of good deeds is faith, and it's not something that is limited to just Sundays or a certain day of the week or a certain time of day. It's who you are. And so that's what my, my Navajo culture really taught me, and that's something that I've learned even more as a Baha'i. The Baha'i faith isn't the conversion of faith. It's the completion of faith in this respect. And so there's no conversion, and, there's no, and there certainly is no... Uh, assimilation at work here. It's, if you, the Baha'i's faith is, if everyone's to come in one planet and one people, if everyone's to live as one human family, you know, then there has to be these, this complementary, you know, these mingling of these cultures. And really, you know, all s spirituality really lends itself to this process of the community building that the Baha'is are engaged in. And it's, it's not something that's dichotomized either, just like in my Navajo culture. And that's where uh, the Native American Baha'i Institute, I think, comes into play. Because th as Baha'is, we're taught to, to attach great importance to the indigenous peoples of America because they'll come so illumined as to illumine the whole world. And so that's why that's, there's this 40 acres here in Arizona on the Navajo Reservation really dedicated to that, to that process and to the f fulfillment of that promise of the illumination of the Native peoples. And so Navi, the Native American Baha'i Institute, 
purpose I've always seen is to raise those resources to empower these native, these native indigenous peoples like myself and to really, you know, to really say that it's, that you belong in this process and everything that you are, all your culture and everything really has a fundamental role in this world changing betterment of the world. Well, the mere fact that spirituality is something that is always present in your life and to be ever conscious of it is something that is noble and is will reform the world. And that is something that uh, Native Americans and the Navajos used to integrate so strongly into their lives, that spirituality. It was always an ever present. We were always conscious of it. And, you know, it's, I think that's kind of what a lot of things boil down to. Prayer isn't, for example, take prayer. Prayer for the Navajo people isn't something that's foreign or scary. You know, I mean, you ask, uh, you ask a Navajo to say a prayer, they'll say a prayer, you know, and they'll be sincere about it, you know, and they'll be reverent about it, you know. And so um, in other places, in all my travels, you know, uh, some people are afraid of it. Some people don't know how to pray. And it's, this, it's that practice that they were so used to doing every morning at, you know, before the sun even comes up, when the, when the light on the horizon is just a barely, a tiny bit of a blue line, you can barely see it. The, um, our, us Navajo people are out there praying towards the east, you know, with our corn pollen. It's just obligatory. It's daily. It's a must. It's part of our lifestyle. And so integrating that spirituality into your life is something that I believe everyone can learn from. And that's something that the Baha'is and the Baha'i teachings and the Baha'u'llah's guidance also teaches about as well. Just this higher consciousness, you know, like using prayer as an example again, it creates mindfulness, it creates awakened spiritual susceptibilities see. And so that's something that Navajo people in the past have really, really thrived on. That's what made us a great society and a great culture. Um, what can the volunteers here offer the Navajo people in this uh, process of illuminating the Navajo peoples? The uh, thing about that language is that, you know, again, it's not tied to assimilation or giving up old for what's new. It reminds me of a quote um, in book five that says that what the youth, what, what is needed today is a live and living faith. And so to me, that's what the, uh, that is what the Baha'i faith is. It's a live and living faith. And so it's, um, and that's what I think the world needs personally. Um, so individuals who come out here, um, there's, there's a great need anywhere you go, but on the reservation, there's, um, things are a bit different. For example, out here, when I was a child, when I was a junior youth, you know, I really wanted to learn how to dance, how to act, how to draw, how to paint. I wanted to play a bunch of instruments, but there was nothing around here that offered any such service, you know, nothing, you know, and it was, uh, everywhere I looked, there was hopelessness and despair. I mean, everyone I knew was either, you know, sick with something, whether it be alcohol abuse or some other drug or just plain depression. And it was just this, I just saw despair as a child everywhere I went. I d had no reason to stand up straight because there was nothing to be happy about out here. And so um, it wasn't until I found, uh, um, started becoming involved in the certain social and economic economic development projects that the Baha'is were having for the everyone, you know, Baha'i or not, this is a process for everyone. And so it was there where I found hope. And I think that's, you know, when, when other young people from other places come and who genuinely want to help others, that is to be ser of service to humanity, something like just sitting down with someone and listening to someone is, is an excellent service to do, especially for the young people. And, you know, if you have certain skills and talents, like if you know how to draw well, or if you're confident and know how to do drama or sing, you know what I mean? There's just this, this, this need, this thirst for it out here. And it's, it's, it's everywhere, you know? Empowerment happens on, in all different kinds of mediums, whether it be artistic, language, literary, spiritual, mental, or recreational. It's needed everywhere in the world. And so that's what, you know, volunteers now you know, are coming here to do no longer just to clean toilets, but also that as well. Just uh, the effect this process has had in my life is, is profound. You know, it's, it's the difference between, the difference it's made in my life, the Baha'i faith, as well as the amazing people, Baha'i or not, that are in this process, the difference it's made in my life, I can just plainly say, is I wouldn't be alive now. I wouldn't be here now. I'd be dead or worse, spiritually dead, you know, at this point in my life if, if 
there wasn't that support, if there wasn't those other people out there to, you know, relay a positive message, to help accompany me, to walk with me in my struggles, and then to assist me when I really needed it, and that genuine sincerity that comes with serving selflessly. That's, that's just something personal to me. And if you ever wonder, you know, that w w where, where do all our good actions go? And in book one it says, you know, uh, holy words and pure and goodly deeds ascend unto the heaven of celestial glory. So everything good we do matters, you know, and that's empowering. That's an empowering thought. And so if you, wherever you choose to help people, you know, know that it goes someplace good and it lasts forever. And that's the message that's for everyone. It's not for me. It's what I've learned, you know, here, you know, being with the junior youth, having conversations with them, being a true friend, trying to be a wise advisor. It's something I've learned. And if that's something that you feel like you want to do or to help people, service in other parts of the world is an excellent way to do that. And it's something I think everyone needs in their life. It'll be the best time in your life if you're sincere. It can also be the hardest, probably the hardest. But if you look back on it a couple years later, you'd be like, wow, that was awesome. Yeah. That's all. Aloha. Peace out, my fellow German folk.